Going from Southeast Asia to the west coast of North America over to the Atlantic is not ideal in the slightest. Well, not for me apparently. I just stepped off a flight from Bangkok with Singapore Airlines on one of their brand new 787-10 Dreamliners. I got a 9.5 hour layover here and there's no better way to spend it at the Silvercrest Lounge here at Singapore Changi's Airport at Terminal 3. I did take a look at the transit hotel, but they were fully booked for the night. When I first walked in, the evening rush was just finishing up. Regardless, I am in desperate need for a shower. There are tons of shower rooms here, fully stocked with amenities to keep you fresh. Towels, soap and shampoo is all provided as well. Although it was getting used a lot and they had the clean upper room for me. I really wish I took a look around the lounge when I first walked in cause there's an actual napping room. But at the time I was more or less okay with crashing on the comfy couches, putting on my sunglasses and a set of earplugs. I could fall asleep sitting down fairly easily. It got pretty dead in the middle of the night, but it got way more busier when I woke up 6 hours later. The full breakfast spread was already laid out, so let's take a look at what's to offer. There's so much space here that there's two separate buffets. These both have western and Singaporean slash Chinese options. I really wish I wasn't dealing with a stomach bug because there's so much good food here. I just went with something basic here, just some fruit and some waffles, just something easy to digest. And luckily enough, my ride taking me to London was right out the window. I really wish I took more advantage of this lounge, but I got some great news at the end of this video. My boarding gate was right under the lounge, so it took little time to get in there. Security had zero lineups, which was good. All the gates here are pig pen style, so every gate or section has its own security screening. I'm so surprised that even for an A380, Singapore Airlines starts boarding 30 minutes prior to departure time. But even more surprising, we actually kind of left on time, but the cabin wasn't too full. My ride up to London for the next 13 hours is this 13 year old massive beluga whale, aka the Airbus A380. And yes, I'm aware there's an actual Airbus beluga. As Singapore Airlines was the launch customer for the A380, there are so many A380 triple bridge gates here, probably the most behind Dubai. Business class is divided into two separate sections on the upper deck. I took the smaller back half thinking it would be more quiet, but that was a mistake you'll soon see later on in the video. Singapore Airlines are still in the process of refurbishing all their A380's interiors, but they're almost done. Regardless, these business class seats look absolutely stunning, only just coming online about two years ago. I swear, there's so much to the seat, I'll try my best to cover it all. Shortly after I sat down, a welcome drink was offered, along with slippers, socks, and an eye mask. There are also amenity kits, but those are available on request. 
There is a ton of space under the seat to store all your carry-on items, even your rollerboard bags. I love this so everything you need is within arm's reach. After seeing many pictures of the seat, I was interested about the legroom while sitting down, but there's tons of space available. Continuing on, we have your usual features you'll find on a modern business class seat like a coat hook and a storage cubby. The literature pocket is in a bit of an odd place, but it didn't seem to bother me. Just to the side is also a water bottle holder. In an easy to reach place behind a panel is the universal power outlet, along with a USB-A charger and an NFC reader. I still don't know what this is for. Although there's a storage cubby, I tend to use this shelf as it's a bit closer and easier to access to what I need. The seat controls were in an easy to use and put in an accessible place, but I accidentally hit the call button maybe once or twice during the flight. The massive tray table swings out from the shelf. It's very sturdy and moves so you can leave the seat while it's open. Hi. While in the middle of filming that, the flight attendant asked if I was a vlogger. I was just so tired that all I said was, y you know what, I can be whatever you want me to be along with a big smile on my face. Typically when I film my reviews, I try to keep my camera hidden when I can. It can go either one of three ways. Flight attendants notice and give extra attentiveness, tell me to stop filming or just completely ignore it altogether. I always hope it's the last one so I can give a bit of a genuine review. But already, the flight attendants and staff have been excellent on this flight. The one flight attendant that directed me to my seat was nice enough to give me a personal introduction show me around the seat, and gave me a breakdown of the whole flight services being offered today. I always greatly appreciate the tensiveness, as it comes off extremely personable. Anyways, we pushed off the gate just a few minutes late, and started up all four Rolls Royce engines. During takeoff and landing, ensure that your tray table is stored away. The While the startup is happening, Let's check out the Chris World IFE. This IFE has tons of worldwide movie and TV options, plus actual live TV. If I've gone through all the new releases I wanted to see on a flight, I like going through the entire catalog and adding a few movies to a playlist. But soon enough we started the taxi and the demo of the seat started to play, along with the actual safety demo. Pull it towards you in an arc until it locks in place. Unfold it to enjoy a full size thing. Right after takeoff, let's check out the Wi-Fi. Singapore Airlines has free Wi-Fi available for all business class passengers. I normally don't buy Wi-Fi on flights, but this was just a pleasant option to have. Good for surfing, but just okay for streaming. On this A380, there's a total of 82 business class seats, so it would only make sense that there's a total of 8 lavatories to accompany it. All of them are fairly spacious and have nice touches to them. They also include all the amenities that are not normally featured in a amenity kit. This includes hair combs and brushes, dental kits, and shaving kits. There's even actual hand towels that are disposable.
As much as I say that I'm good falling asleep upright and sitting down, that doesn't mean I got an actual good sleep. So I often have my breakfast later in the flight and get some sleep first. While getting change, one of the flight attendants provided a turndown service, which was so kind of them. A lot of people tend to have an issue with how the bed alignment is on the seat, but hey, if you shift your whole body to line up with the footwell, it's really comfortable and actually pretty spacious. I managed to get a solid 5 hours of sleep, even with a couple kids crying and running up and down the aisle. When I woke up, I was offered either a western breakfast or dim sum. Seeing as I already had a light breakfast in the lounge, dim sum was the better option as it's closer to lunchtime right now. I love dim sum, just not the chicken feet, but there wasn't any on this flight thankfully. This was a fairly light meal and I actually really liked that option. You know you're gonna eat a decent amount of food in the lounge, so it's better to have a smaller breakfast than lunch or dinner later on. Plus, sometimes it can take a decently long time to get to your hotel or wherever you're staying. So dinner time might have came and gone already. Amenity kits are provided on request. This is provided by Pen Hollingans and is just stocked with hand lotion, facial mist, and lip balm. I took some of the extra amenities from the lavatory to make it more of a complete kit. Throughout the flight, I was casually passing the time while watching movies and having small naps here and there. One thing that really bothered me but this typically doesn't upset me was two parents flying from Australia who was trying to tire out their kids by letting them run up and down the aisle. This was going on during the whole flight, from start to finish, and they maybe only got about 2 hours of sleep. Even one of the flight attendants came up to me, seeing whether or not I was too bothered by it. I mean, I, I get it, flying with kids is extremely hard, I understand that, especially when you're 20 plus hours in the air from Australia. But the parents just gave up trying halfway throughout the flight, and it was actually just really annoying. Around two and a half hours prior to landing, the final full meal service started off with Singapore Airlines famous satay, followed by smoked salmon and a salad, accompanied by some parmesan crusted bread and a breadstick. I got the roasted stuffed chicken for the main, and in all honesty, this was just below average. This chicken thigh was just way too thick and was slightly undercooked in the center, leaving a bit of a gamey taste. Seeing as I didn't want to fuel my stomach bug, I had to stop eating it. Back in the lounge, I got my seat changed from the left side of the aircraft to the right side just so I can get these absolutely stunning views of central London. But the weird thing was, this was the first 380 I've ever taken with no outside camera views. But regardless, the views out the window were absolutely amazing. So to summarize my experience with Singapore Airlines, I like to compare them to Cathay Pacific, as they're very similar high-end airlines, but are special in their own ways. But in all honesty, I had a better experience with Cathay and Business when I flew with them the same time last year. Look, don't get me wrong, I still think that it's an immense privilege to fly business class on one of the world's best rated airlines, especially on the A380. But same with my last flight, that same spark I had with Cathay wasn't there. I thought the crew was amazing and was some of the best I've ever had on my last two flights. But two for two, the food was just okay. Despite the footwell people tend to criticize, I thought it was excellently designed overall and looks absolutely fantastic. And to touch back on it again, I also know that it's hard to control children's behaviors on flights. But you know what, it gets to a point. Let me know what your opinion is in the comments, I'd like to know. I know I don't talk about price often, but seeing as this was a redemption flight, I actually didn't spend a single cent on this. I used 117,000 aeroplane points to fly from Bangkok to London 
by a Singapore. By no means am I discouraged to take Singapore Airlines again. If anything, I'm the exact opposite. I already booked for next year Singapore to New York JFK, the longest flight in the world. So hopefully by then, I'm a bit more healthier and have a better optimistic look at Singapore Airlines and business class. I truly can't wait for the next time I get the chance to fly on them. Thanks again to you all so much for taking the time to watch this video. And if you feel like it, feel free to drop a like and subscribe. Cheers, and thank you so much again. I'll see you in the next one.